everybody this is nandita jiraj currently pursuing mbbs in mandya institute of medical sciences i am feeling proud to say a few words about my mandavia excellence pu college in the year 2017-18 i was topped as district topper by securing 586 out of 600 in pu board exams teachers lecturers faculties are very supportive and infrastructure is very good thanks i thank all my uh, lecturers for being a great support system during my pu days um, and their coaching has made me to get through the neat and cet exams with a good and decent rank and thank you so much hello dear students welcome you all for the fourth session of biology neat coaching so we are discussing the questions from the chapter sexual reproduction in flowering plants in last three classes we discussed about 64 questions let us continue question number 65 the following figure shows ls of embryo of grass recognize the scutellum in this diagram see even in theory this figure is most important so they given the figure of the embryo of grass so in the embryo of the grass there is a single cotyledon what we call it as scutellum the region above the level of this cotyledon is called epicotyle and the lower one is called hypocotyle in the epicotyle the labeling that we have marked b is the coleoctyle a membrane that cover the shoot primordia that is plumule and this the labeling c is the epiblast and d here this is the radical and radical is covered by a root cap and a thin membrane called coleolysa so there was in the following figure shows the ls of embryo of grass recognize the scutellum in this diagram so a is the scutellum so the option is a so option is no no option is b so b is the option the a is the scutellum next question 661 functional megaspore forms embryo sac after how many meiotic division after how many sorry mitotic division as we discussed in the last class inside the new cells towards the micropylar end single cell become megaspore mother cell which is diploid and this diploid megaspore mother cell undergo meiotic division to produce four megaspores out of four megaspores formed three will get degenerated only single haploid megaspore produce entire embryo sac so that is called monosporic development so this single megaspore which is haploid the free nuclear division takes place there is a mitotic division which produces two nucleus haploid nucleus both these haploid nucleus now move towards opposite pole so on the second mitotic division four nucleus are produced and each of these in nucleus haploid nucleus in each pole completes the third mitotic division to produce eight nucleus so how many division took place first results in two nuclei and second mitotic division results in four nuclei and the third one in eight nuclei because megas sorry embryo sac contain eight nuclei so the answer is a so three mitotic division produce the embryo sac next slide for the formation of embryo sac 
megaspore mother cell undergoes megaspore mother cell so megaspore mother cell undergo one meiotic division to produce three four megaspores three will degenerate and this single megaspore just last slide we studied undergo three mitotic division to produce embryo sac so the answer is one mitotic and three meiotic division no one meiotic and three division so b is the right answer so it will show one meiotic and three mitotic divisions pollination can be divided into three types as well known autogamy geninogamy and xenogamy depending on the type so on by which type we decide that the pollination is autogamy geninogamy or xenogamy so there are four options based on the type of pollen based on the source of pollen type of ovum and source of ovum as well as it. so pollination is due, is of three types based on source of pollen if the pollen that shed from the anther of a flower drops on the stigma of the same flower it is called autogamy or self pollination if the pollen from a anther of a flower sheds on the stigma of another flower born on the same plant it is called geninogamy if the pollen from one plant sheds on the stigma of another plant belonging to same species it is called xenogamy so the source of the pollen based on that we divide the pollination into three types so the question is like this in a typical complete bisexual and hypogynous flower hope you will remember you already studied in first qc any flower if all the floral parts arises from the base of the ovary that is on the thalamus from the base of the ovary the ovary is called superior and the flower is called hypogynous flower so in a typical complete bisexual and hypogynous flower the arrangement of floral whorls on the thalamus from outermost to innermost is this is a easy question the outermost whorl is the calyx which contain sepal the second whorl is called corolla it contains petal the third whorl is called androecium the individual segments are called stamens and the last whorl is called gynoecium so gynoecium consists of carpels so calyx corolla androecium and gynoecium a option is the right answer 78th one in algae and bryophytes and pteridophyte algae bryophyte and pteridophyte male gametes are transported by this relative question we already discussed by water so as all bryophytes invariably needs water to complete their sexual reproduction so bryophytes are often called amphibians of plant kingdom thank you the genetic mechanism see the question you have to understood understand the genetic mechanism which prevents inbreeding there are many mechanism that prevents inbreeding but the question itself is saying the genetic mechanism which prevents inbreeding is non synchronization self incompatibility unisexuality both they had to answer is self incompatibility there are several plants where their flowers are modified in such a way the pollen if the pollen of the flower shed down the stigma because of certain genetic mechanism these pollen will not germinate on the stigma thus it prevents self pollination and this mechanism of outbreeding device is called self incompatibility in case of moth and yucca relationship of the moth relationship of the moth relationship sorry in case of moth and yucca relationship the moth deposits the egg in so this 
in last class we already understood about this the moth deposits its egg in the cavity of the ovary and that cavity of the ovary is called locule next one so answer is b locule here again the macrophylloid albuminous c they have given albuminous c non albuminous c in column 1 albuminous c non albuminous c perisperm and scutellum so albuminous c so the seed which have retained the embryosperm that is the embryos not consume the endosperm even after the formation of seed is coconut and all monocotyledons except orchids non albuminous c of course groundnut all dicots most of the dicots seeds are non albuminous seed except castor so orchid among monocots are non albuminous among dicots castor is albuminous so perisperm is a ruminant of new cells in as seen in black pepper and beet so black pepper and scutellum it is a single cotyledon which we find in embryo of monocot especially grass next one starting from the innermost part the correct sequence in an ovule is you already know let us go with the options option a egg nucleus starting from innermost part the correct sequence of parts in the ovule egg nucleus embryo sac integument no egg is inside of course inside the embryo sac inside the nucleus so that option is not the right one egg embryo sac nucleus and integument embryo sac nucleus integument egg no egg integument embryo sac nucleus no the option is the second one egg is present inside the embryo sac and embryo sac is embedded inside the new cells towards micropyla right and this new cells is covered by one or two layers of integuments next one the transformation of ovule ovules into seeds and ovary into fruit so how does it proceed so after fertilization that is double fertilization and triple fusion the ovary develops into fruit and ovules into seed which takes place simultaneously so it's simultaneously so epicotyl as a shoot apex and few leaf primordia enclosed in a hollow folia structure so in monocot embryos the epicotyl as a leaf primordia so this primordial is enclosed in a hollow a thin membranous cover which we discussed in the 65th slide so that is coleoptile likewise in the monocot embryo the radical consists of root cap which is covered by a thin membrane that is called coleorhiza so the option is coleoptile if they given uh, hypocotyle that is radical it would be coleorhiza next one a mechanism to prevent cross pollination is protogyny protoandry heterostyly cleistogyny so they given four options protogyny protoandry heterostyly heterostyly and cleistogyny so protogyny is the condition in flowers when female reproductive parts mature earlier than the male reproductive part likewise protoandry when male reproductive part matures before the female reproductive part so heterostyly is one of the outbreeding device here both stigma and stamen are kept far away from each other in different position to avoid self pollination cleistogamy the condition you have already seen uh, already know these flowers never open until fertility about pollination is achieved so here the mechanism that prevents cross pollination 
that mechanism to prevent cross pollination is cleistogamy. So these flowers never open until the self pollen grains pollinates the stigma. So the answer is cleistogamy. So, this by mistake, the figure has not been mentioned. That figure is Parthenocarpic fruit of strawberry. So, you go through the syncarpus, uh, sorry, fruit part. There is a last figure, there is a Parthenocarpic, sorry, figure is a false fruit of strawberry. See, fruits are categorized into two types those fruits which develop from the ovary. After fertilization, we call them as true fruits. If the fruits develop from any other part other than ovary, as in apple, apple, the thalamus is the edible part, it is the fruit. So, such fruits which develop from thalamus, there is other part, it is called false fruit. So, here you have to go through the diagram in the textbook, there is strawberry. Next one. Which is not true among the following? Statements. <clears throat> Pollen grains are released from anther at two cell stage. Yes, of course, yes. In 60% of the plants, pollen grains release at two cell stage. But in another 40% of the plants, pollen get released at three cell stage. Sporogenous cells directly behaves as Vegas or mother cell. Yes. So, the sporogenous tissue become Pollen mother cell in case of androsium, uh, sorry, in case of microsporangium and in megasporangium, so it behaves as megaspore mother cell. Megaspore divides twice to form eight nucleate embryo sac. The last option is egg and silent gates always lie near micropylarae. So the question is which is not true among the following? So the C is the option. Megaspore divides twice to form an 8 nucleot embryo sac. No, the megaspore which we already studied, it divides three times mitotically to form embryo sac. 80th question. Statement A states that the flowers pollinated by flies and bats secrete foul odor to attract them. So this statement is the correct statement. So many of the flowers which are pollinated by flies and bats, they secrete a foul odor or a bad odor. This attracts the bats and flies towards the flower. So this evolution or adaptation is to achieve pollination. So the statement B states that honey is made up of by bees by digesting the pollen collected from the flowers. No. So honey bees suck the nectar and they break down that carbohydrate by the enzymes present in nectar stomach into monosaccharide which is sweet to taste. So that's how it happened. So statement A is correct and statement B is the wrong statement. So here the option is uh, statement A is correct and statement B is the wrong. C is the option. Next question. Fusion of male gamete with egg in embryo sac is called. So, the fusion of male gamete with egg in embryo sac is called. What do we call it as? We call it as syngamy. We call it as syngamy. Triple fusion occurs between. See, last question we discussed. The fusion of haploid male gamete with the female gamete is called syngamy. It is the double fertilization. Here, triple fusion occurs between. So, the second male gamete released inside the embryo sac fuses with two polar nuclei, two haploid polar nuclei present in the central cell to form triploid primary endosperm nuclei. So, this is the options are egg and male gamete, triple fusion occur between egg and male gamete, no, male gamete and secondary nucleus, yes, the option B is the right option. Tepitum present in the microsporangia wall occur between. 
So this is the easiest question. Outermost layer is the epidermis. Epidermis is followed by endothesium. After endothesium, there are one or two middle layers. Next to that is the tepitum. So after tepitum, there is a microsporangium filled with sporogenous tissue. Let us check the options. Option A, epidermis and endothesium. No. Endothesium and middle layer. No. Epidermis and middle layer. No. Middle layer and sporogenous tissue. This is the right option. So D is the correct answer. Next question. Which of the following cell on division produce two male gametes? So as you are aware, pollen shed at two cells condition. Inside the pollen vein, there is one large cell called tube cell or vegetative cell and another small cell floating in the cytoplasm of the vegetative cell is the generative cell. So as the pollen tube reaches the ovary, which is initiated, the pollen tube is initiated by the vegetative cell or tube cell followed by the generative cell. So this generative cell divides to produce two haploid male gametes. So it is produced by which of the following cell division produce the male gamete. Sorry, the figure was missing. This is the A and this is the B. So A is the generative cell and B is the tube cell. So A, that is B is the option. So next question. A typical embryo sac possess, a typical embryo sac possess egg cider gates together. They are called egg apparatus and secondary cell. No. Egg cider gates, central cell and polar nuclei. A typical embryo sac possess egg, egg is there, cider gate together. They are called egg apparatus, central cell which possess two polar nuclei. No, this is also not a good, right option. Still antipodal should be there. Egg, synergids, polar nuclei and antipodals. So this is the right option. So egg, synergids, polar nuclei and antipodal. But polar nuclei are representing central cell. Function of guiding and attracting the pollen tube is done by. Function of guiding. And attracting the pollen tube is done by, see, already we have dealt it. As soon as the pollen tube enters the ovule, through the micropyle, it enters into one of the synergate. Because this synergate, this is the Excel, these are the synergate, they contain filiform apparatus. They contain filiform apparatus through this, the pollen tube enters into one of the synergate. So the answer is filiform apparatus. Next question. Clistogamous flowers are. Clistogamous flower are. They have given four options. Male flower which never open. Female flower which never open. Bisexual flower which never open. Open bisexual flower which perform self-formation in bud condition. So you are the, as well aware. Clistogamous are those flower which are bisexual. Say. They never open until the pollination is achieved. So in order to achieve self-pollination, they have adopted that mechanism. So it's a bisexual flower which never opens. So the option is C. Attractants and rewards are required for. So some attractants and some rewards are required for which type of pollination? Is it anthemophily? Is it hydrophily? Is it for clistogamy or it is, is it for anemophily? Anthemophily is the pollination that takes place by insects. Hydrophily is the pollination that takes place by water. So anemophily pollination by wind, clistogamy is an adaptation of the flower to attain self-pollination. So here Hydrophily and anemophily are the abiotic pollinating agents. Why? Anthemophily is the biotic pollinating agent. That is the pollination occurs through the 
insects and insects are attracted they visit the flower often to get the reward or some nectar or some pollen so attractants and reward are required for entomophily so 89th question flower which have single ovule in the ovary and packed into inflorescence are usually pollinated by so this we have uh, already understood so wind pollinated in wind pollinated plants so the chance of pollination is mere factor it's a chance factor so these in these plant there are varieties of adaptation the pollen grains are very light they are non sticky so in these plants the small and tiny plants which their ovary contains single ovule they are packed to form an inflorescence in the inflorescence, there is a feathery st uh, stamen and st stigma, so which are well exposed. That is feathery stigma, stamen and stigma are well exposed. So that is wind. So wind is a major abiotic pollinating agent. A dioecious flowering plant prevents both. So dioecious plant means in these plants, male flower is produced in one plant and female flower on the other plant as seen in papaya and some date palms. So a dioecious flowering plant prevents, it prevents both autogamy and also genogamy. So the only pollination that occurs in dioecious plant is xenogamy. <coughs> Which one of the following statement is not true? Tepitum helps in dehiscence of anther. No, tepitum nourishes the developing pollen grain. So, this is the third, fourth wall layer of the microsporangium. Exine of the pollen grain is made up of sporopollenin. Yes, the outer wall exine has sporopollenin deposition. Pollen grains of many species cause severe allergies. Of course, especially the pollen grains of carrot grass, parthenium. So it causes bronchitis and many allergic reactions. Stored pollen in liquid nitrogen can be used in crop breeding. Of course, yes. So pollens like seed bank, pollen banks are there where they store the pollen grain in minus 196 degrees Celsius. And these banks are called pollen bank. So the option, the statement which is not true is the first option. This is a tepitum helps in dehiscence. So epidermis, endothesium and middle layers, they helps in dehiscence of anther, not the tepitum. Which one of the following may require pollinators but is genetically similar to autogamy? See, in autogamy, the pollen grain produced on the anther of a flower shed on the stigma of the same flower. Stigma of the same flower. But in chitinogamy, the pollen grain produced in the one flower shed on the stigma of another flower born on the same plant, and it most of the time it needs always it needs the aid of a pollinator. It may be a biotic or abiotic pollinator. So it but this doesn't bring about genetic variability because both the flowers are born on the same plant. Next one. The ileum is a scar on the... See this, you have to understand. So when we take a seed, a dicot seed, a bean seed, there are three parts. Seed coat. Cotyledons, one or two cotyledons, but when they got two cotyledons and an embryo. So when you carefully observe, observe this seed, so there is a whitish scar here and this represents the ileum. So and there is a tiny aperture which is the micropyle. So the question is the ileum is a scar. It is a scar. On the seed where micropyle seed where funicle is attached. So it's option D. So 
the funicle or the stalk of the ovule is attached to body of the ovule and that region is called ilium. After seed formation, ilium appears like a scar. So it's a point of attachment of funicle. So fourth one. A golden opportunity awaits ahead for all the college passing out students at Webnet Solutions. Having basic knowledge about operating a computer and knowing its aspects, it's valued everywhere. We provide students from various backgrounds hands-on experience about Java, C++, Core Java, Python, Advanced Java with J2EE, RDBMS, MS SQL, ASP.NET plus 8DO.NET, JavaScript with jQuery, Web Design with Bootstrap 4.0 with certification. Why is it needed? Educational institutions might just brief you on the surface, but we give you a broader perspective on C, C++ and Java. We are located in the Sugar City, Mandia. What are you waiting for? Contact us and book your slots and report the best benefits.